Do you want to be a marine biologist? Or just wonder what marine biologists get up to all day? Are we really just surfing, chilling, saving the turtles? But we have to do some other stuff as well. My name is Elizabeth, I'm a marine biologist. This is gonna be a video series all about the nitty gritty details of being a marine biologist. Covering from the topics that you learn about as you study to become a marine biologist, the areas that you can work in as your job, the skills that you need to do that, the qualifications you need, down to the finances, the competitiveness, the, the details that you need to know if this is the job for you. But make sure to subscribe to not miss out on this content and to see my other hundreds of videos all about awesome marine biology and sea life, which is the best. Which is why you should become a marine biologist. I mean, you can do what you want. I'm not biased at all as a qualified marine biologist. So today's video is gonna focus all about topics. Now this is a great place to start because if you're intrigued about what a marine biologist does, or intrigued to know if this is what you want to go on to study to become a marine biologist, then I'm just gonna be listing off a load of different things that I learn as a marine biologist and those different types of areas. So as a marine biologist, you learn all this. Great, done. I'll see you in the next video, shall I? Wait, hold on, I'm actually gonna break this down a lot more, but it just goes to show how incredibly broad marine biology is. Now, sure, marine biology is the study of stuff in the sea, living creatures to flowing waves, but nowhere in, in my opinion, nowhere else in the biology learning world are you gonna get such different topics that you can learn under the same umbrella. So the first type of topic that you can learn about is oceanography. This is basically the study of the chemical, the physical and the biological features of the ocean. It's really focusing a lot of the time as well on currents, how the water moves around the entire planet and how all that interacts. You can literally be learning and studying about how the entire ocean on our planet moves. I mean, that is the majority of the planet. If you ever meet marine biologists, you will hear this a hundred times a day. How much of planet Earth is made up of seawater? 71%. You will be learning about 71% of our entire planet in just that topic, right? Take that and go to the other end of the spectrum and you could be learning about the genetics and the DNA and the makeup and the evolution or the diseases or, or all of these different things that interact at a, at a level of, of DNA of a creature. So you could go from learning about the entire ocean to the basis of life of a single species in a single specific bit of that ocean. Like that's all marine biology, those two ends. And the beauty of marine biology is it's not a massive leap to be able to say you're interested in both of those topics, study them together. Take this paper from White et al, who is studying the population genetic changes with ocean currents. Like that is someone that has combined their two loves or the end of the spectrum from marine biology and has spent their life doing that. Not just in this video, but as we go through this series, I hope that you understand that marine biology is just so varied. And it's one of those, those kind of careers that you can pick, that you can really carve out whatever topic and wherever you want to go. Technically, I have an undergraduate in marine biology, but my PhD is in civil engineering. Like. That is how broad you can get with marine biology, that you can jump out of the discipline to something that goes from flip-flops to steel toe cap boots to wetsuits to like physical actual suits and it still be in the world of marine biology. It is such a varied career and I cannot stress that enough. And that I just find incredibly exciting. And hopefully a bit of like a relief for people if they're wondering what to do with their career paths there's flexibility in marine biology. I'm gonna list off basically almost topics and modules and things that I covered as I went through my undergraduate degree. Now, I'm gonna cover whether you actually need to go to university to become a marine biologist in a separate video, but regardless of whether you go to university or not, these kind of topics are taught to you at university because that's what 
you're most likely to go on to be able to study and use in your job. And so even if you didn't do an undergraduate or a degree in marine biology, you're likely to be interested in these kind of topics to go into those careers. Okay, I'm not gonna spin every time because I will get dizzy because there are a lot of topics to cover. Also stick around to the end because I'll be going and giving a book recommendation for anyone that wants to do this in a lot more detail, but let's get into it. Quick fire marine biology topics, land stuff. You learn about land things as a marine biologist. I say this in this tone because if I'm gonna be honest, it was my least favorite aspect of it, but it is really useful to have the fundamentals of biology and chemistry and that kind of stuff so that you know either how weird the ocean has gotten because it's gone against the norm on land or um, just, just so that when you're in the science field in itself, you can kind of hold conversation and understand what other projects are going on because it's also really inspiring to be inspired by other scientists and other projects, even if they're not related to the sea, though, again. I'm biased. I'm get, I mean, I'm not biased. I'm, I love the sea so much. So covering the land things, you'll learn about plants. There's only like one type of plant, seagrass, maybe mangroves, if you're counting them too, that actually go in the sea. So you learn about plants, which is a very landy thing. You'll learn about things like cell chemistry and cell biology, which are kind of applicable. Stuff's made of cells in the sea as well. You'll learn conservation techniques, which in some cases aren't applicable because conserving, say, things on a safari is slightly different to conserving things in coral reefs. But actually the principles and design across those can be really useful. What's also really good is that because you're learning this basis, say you are going to do it at university, of the time, depending on the university and you'll have to check, you do like a, a, a year where you're in with the biologist and the zoologist and the marine biologist together. So if you get to university and you decide that you absolutely love say learning about conservation on safaris or learning about human biology then there are options that you might be able to switch in between i for one was kind of glad <laughs> when that base stuff was over and i was zipping on to the more marine topic animals oh marine biology the biology is in the thing love me some weird weird sea life but do you just learn about animals like you just sit down and just learn a bunch of animals and how cool they are yes a lot of the time I do. So that's often tied into things like taxonomy and evolution. You'll learn about prehistoric marine animals, how life on earth evolved because everything basically came from the oceans and how that has evolved into different species today. You'll learn awesome facts about those creatures, but also how to identify them and how to do taxonomy, which is a really key part of science. It's how to identify what is that weird animal there. And a lot of the time this is really cool because stuff like barnacles, which looks like this, are actually really closely related to crabs, which look like this, that look very different. So learning about that evolution and that taxonomy behind that is actually really interesting. That can tell us a lot about the animals and the topic. Sometimes you'll just have to learn facts like how many plates does a chitin have, which is this thing here. It has eight. That was a genuine exam question. We learned about how creatures adapted to survive and things like how parasites would interact with different organisms and not just into like the broad animals themselves, but actually like the physiology of them. We learned about how different muscle types changed for different fish species and how that affected how they hunted and whether they were like, you know, really fast predators that went through the water or they were like flatfish that just like chilled and, and stayed still. We learned about animal movement and how they interacted with the ocean. Things like how turtles navigate around the planet, do giant massive migrations. Things like how whales dive, how aggressive or calm creatures are, how territorial. There is definitely some aggressive fishes out there and I have physical personal experience with that. And there's some really chill animals as well. And that's all that stuff is linked into how they adapt, how they survive, how they find their little niche, that little area of survival that works for them in their environment, which is point number three. You learn a lot about the broad environments in the ocean. Four, 71% of Earth is covered by the sea, and that is technically just one big puddle, but it's very, very different environments. From learning about mangrove forests and salt marshes, which are like landy kind of sea things, all the way down into the intertidal and the rock pooling, which obviously is, is fine. It's like, whatever. I've only just made like hundreds of videos about how awesome the intertidal zone is, but we'll brush past that. 
all the way down into the subtidal, into the deeper parts of the oceans, into the abyssal plains, into the deep sea crevices. Hydrothermal vents are in different environments down there, from bits in the tropics where there's coral reefs. Looking at how things exist, you know, in coral reefs and in hot seas, all the way up to the, the Arctic Pole. How the tectonic plates of the world affect things to upwelling zones, which is the temperature and the depth of the water, and brings up a load of nutrients and just creates these big areas of massive productivity with loads of fishing and really awesome bits. There's spots like that in the ocean. You'll learn then about things like that, about how temperature can influence different currents, how waves form, how weather has influenced it, how climate change has influenced things, how global warming is influencing it. And and that's another area that of topics that you'll study is like the human impacts on our ocean. How is sewage influencing stuff that goes out in the sea? How is um, global warming affecting it? How is ocean acidification occurring? How is building stuff in the sea influencing the marine life and the marine environment? And all of these different things, both in the past and predicted in the future, and linking that into like policy and how you protect things. And it's just, again, such a different topic if you want to go in that direction. Kind of combining that all together is the study of ecology, which is basically why is that weird thing there? But that can really branch out from learning about how an animal reproduces and actually will physically get there versus what's eating it, what are the food chains, how are the animals going around and interacting? Is it there because a predator hasn't eaten it yet? or is the predator not there? Maybe it is the predator. What is the things like in the nutrients does it have? Does it have the right amount of food? Are we influencing it in a human way? The study of ecology is really interesting and what, well, I would describe myself as an ecologist, which is, again, not biased at all, but it's things like ecology that make it so easy in marine biology to draw in all of these different aspects. So if you're listening to this and you're finding, oh, I, I find all of that interesting, actually doing something like ecology is how you would tie all that in together and answering questions about why is that there and why is it different if it is. Again, I'm gonna talk more about skills in the next video, but this is kind of a mixture of skills and topics is that you'll learn about as well things like aquaculture and fishery. So how to look after animals in a kind of aquatic aquarium kind of environment, how things like aquaculture is affecting economies and again, fisheries, things like that. Are we overfishing? How to tell if we're overfishing? How to look at the human impact of humans relying on fish for their livelihood versus creating sustainable stocks and fish populations. And you go out and you get to learn how to sample and study these things. This is gonna fit more into the skills part of things, but things like going out on boats and sampling that way, to you going out and using nets to catch fish and count that way, to looking at life on the beach from the little tiny worms to the, the big rocky shore things, how to count that. And then of course, across all these topics, you have things like understanding statistics, understanding big data, understanding how to do good writing and good presenting. And all of these different things are topics that will be covered, though they kind of sit more in the school thing, so I'm gonna go into more detail with them there. If you are interested in all this and becoming a marine biologist or just learning a bit more about the marine biology thing, there is one book I highly recommend that really covers all of the topics I've just mentioned in more detail in kind of one place. And then from there, if you're really super interested, you can go off and like investigate even more. But this is The Marine World by Francis Dipper. And this book has just an absolute ton from talking about sea life itself to the environments, to the currents. I've spoken about this on my channel before, but it's a really amazing book. And if I had had this before going to undergraduate, it would have just been so incredible and amazing because I would have just been glued to this book. But even now, 10 years from doing my undergraduate, I still go to this book all the time for inspiration, for ideas, to just remind myself why the sea is so wonderful. So I recommend checking that out if you can. But thank you all for watching this video. I am very excited to bring this series to you. It's basically been 10 years since I started my undergraduate degree and I've learned a load since then. And I'm basically making this video series as if I was talking to my younger self to just give myself those hints and tips and tricks and all the information that I have learned um, 
at an earlier stage to you all so that you all have a bit more of an idea than I did going into the marine biology world. But spoiler, I enjoy it very much, so. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe to keep up with the series and just to keep up with all my other YouTube videos as well. And if you are able and want to support me over on Patreon, you can access exclusive content and get your own little marine creature drawn at the end of the video. And it's super appreciated and helps me carry on making content for this channel. I will see you all in the next video. Bye everyone. And if you want to give me some extra support, then head over to my Patreon where you can unlock exclusive content and join the Marine Mumbles Patreon family. Happy rock pooling, everyone!